Hello, my beautiful Pisces. Welcome to your 2024 year in review. Um, you are the last sign for what I've been doing, just so you know. It, you probably already know, but um, I've been I'm gonna break the year down, so I'm doing it seasonal. So we're starting in this reading with January, February, and March. And then somewhere in February, I'll bring out your um, February, March. Then I'll bring out the next one. I'll give you plenty of time. Um, and the reason why I decided to do this Pisces is because I feel like doing the whole year. First of all, I feel like it'd be too long if I'm going to give you in-depth you know, messages, answers, questions, you know, answer those questions, um, then we want to be able to take our time. So these alone, these alone are taking some time, and um, that's good. It means it's bringing out a lot of information, a lot of good messages. Um, so we are moving into Universal Year 8, and that's another reason why I'm doing this. I just want to prepare you for that Universal Year 8, and and this way you understand what it's asking for. I jotted down a few things, what the eight means to me. Um, eight is associated with wealth, power, influence, ambitions, capability. Um, it can be a time or it probably will be a time where there's going to be some transformations. Uh, but these transformations, we're really meant to embrace them because they're only going to lift us. And we want to keep that in mind, you know, sometimes we're going to be at the bottom of the wheel. But we're, when we're at the bottom of the wheel this year, it's so that we can seek an answer um, away, you know, away back to the top. And I feel like you're going to find it because the lows this year's, I really feel like, are just meant to show us something. And I feel like as soon as we see it, learn it, boom, we're out of it. So keep that in mind. Um, this is also a year as you create wealth, share the wealth, share your love, share your wealth. Um, and, it, you know, that means if you have more than you need, then um, keep your fellow man in mind. This is a year, even though it really speaks about your material wealth and growth. Um, it's also about mankind. So keep that in mind. Um, the eight is a number of infinity. If you see the magician, he's got an eight above his head, and it's really to represent infinity. But if you turn to the side, it's an eight. Uh, no beginning, no end. To me, that means that you've been here before. You've done this before. There's nothing that you're going to go through or that you've been through that you as a spiritual being haven't already been through. So that's a sense of power right there. Um, and remember that because, you know, that's powerful if you remember that. Listen, I'm not just this human being. I'm a spiritual being having human experiences. Um, pull on that wellspring of information. And then eight is also about, because we're getting ready to end a cycle, because we run a nine-year cycle, so... 2025 will be the nine, right? So eight, this is a great time because remember, eight is also about a new beginning. So this would be a great time to look back at the last seven years of your life. What have you been cultivating? What is it that you, that's maybe been sitting on the back burner that you'd like to now bring to the front burner? This is the time. This is the time. Trust in yourself. Um, if you don't ask your guides to give you signs, make them very clear. Matter of fact, I feel like when you go in, especially into my readings, like ask your guides questions, you know, ask them to give you some type of confirmation or verification that a message is meant for you or the whole, whole spread's meant for you. Um, so I definitely would, I mean, that's how, if when I watch a reading, which I don't have the time to do that often anymore, but I always go in with my guide saying, give me, give me the validation that I need. Um, and they do. So last but not least, this is a year where I feel like our mantra should be get comfortable with success.
comfortable with success. I am comfortable with success. So that is just a little snippet of the year eight. And matter of fact, when I'm done with your reading, I think I'm going to do a video um, that is just going to talk about the year eight for everyone. So keep your eyes open for that. Um, I do want you to know real quick, I hate to talk before the beginning of a reading. I like to get right into it. But there are a couple things I want to tell you. Um, you know, I was doing a holiday special where I was doing what buy one personal reading, get one free. And I was doing that because, first of all, it's the holidays. And I felt like I had to do something. And then, you know, I thought, let's make it really good. This is something I do once every couple of years. Um, so you buy one reading. Uh, the second way, second one you can certainly give away as a, as a gift if you choose, or you can keep it yourself. Um, the only stipulation is I ask that you wait four months after the initial, after your first reading. Um, it, and the reason why is I don't feel like you need it before that. And I feel like it would just be a waste of your money. Personal readings with me are very detailed. Um, so I would hope that you would not need it after that. And by the way, there is no expiration date. So that's only going on for, I said when I did Pisces, I was going to let, I was going to let it run um, one day after I put your video out. So two more days for that special. And all that info is below, by the way. Um, I also have the membership program, so you can think about that. Um, but let's get into your reading, Pisces. So we're going to start with Mother Mary. And then we're going to break it down per month. I'm going to use, I am using the same decks that I've been using in the majority of the readings. I think there was one reading where I changed them out a little bit. But other than that, I'm using the same decks. And I'm doing that with purpose. I'm looking for the synchronicities between you and the other signs. Um, you know, and I know some of you watch like more than just your sign. And you should watch your moon and your rising also. You know, get a full picture of, you know, your year or the season. Um, so, anyways, I'm going to use the Universal Tarot for January. I'm going to use the Gilded Tarot, and I'm sorry, I'm going to use the Psychic Tarot for February. The Tarot Dreams for March. And then any clarifying that needs done, we will use the Gilded Tarot. But let's go ahead and begin. My beautiful Pisces. So, 2024, mercy, mercy. I am kind and thoughtful towards myself and others. I am kind and thoughtful towards myself and others. Don't forget to include yourself in that equation, right? Be kind to yourself also. So we'll read that from the book at the end. Um, yeah, we'll read it from the end. Let's go ahead and open up the tarot portion. I'm going to bring the lid down a little bit. There we go. Um, everything is really shuffled well, but I do like to shuffle it with you here also. So we'll give it a couple shuffles. They don't want to be shuffled. All right, one more. I like a nice clean shuffle. Just like that. Okay, let's give them a cut and let's open up January. Um, by the way, this is for Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising. You could have planets in the sign of Pisces. Uh, many of you are intuitively guided to the channel or to a video, um, thank you for paying attention to your intuition. And some of you, you're here because you're in love with the Pisces, whether romantically, platonically. Um, you know, you just want to, what's going on, Pisces? So, you know, we'll find out. All right. And we just want to kind of clear our mind now. Enough talking, Sandy. 
Let's begin. All right, we open with the King of Cups. Could be you. Um, Pisces, another Pisces, Cancer, or Scorpio. You know, a lot of people ask me, like, if they're dating, you know, or they're interested in someone who is of the same sign, how do I know who's me and who's not me? I feel like you, you should be able to feel that. You know, the storyline should be able to make it pretty clear for you. Now, we're going to have different storylines um, because there's a lot of people here. But remember, within one story can be a bunch of different stories. So trust your intuition to know, well, what's right for you. All right. Well, well hello, Knight of Cups. Interesting because here's this king sitting in his, on his throne. But he looks like he's about to get up. He's got that cup in his hand. And that cup is like, it's like he's thinking about handing that cup over to someone. And so he does. Knight of Cups speaks about an unexpected cup of fulfillment coming your way. Now, remember, this can go either way. It may be you thinking about giving this cup to someone. But I kind of feel like it's for you because this is unexpected. It's kind of like I don't even know what's happening. Hmm. Ten of Swords. Interesting. That would come out there because that has nothing to do with fulfillment. And then the Page of Pentacles. So the Page of Pentacles mirroring this king over here. This page, I feel like, I feel like the Ten of Swords belongs to this page. Now, you could be this page. You know, don't worry that you're not an earth sign or maybe have earth in your chart. This page is, it's really about a path of knowledge. You know, this is someone who is trying to build up their, you know, let's say financial world, but not just that. Um, because I feel like, yes, it can be book smarts, but I also feel it's like street smarts. You know, like experience, like I've been there, done that. He's looking right over at this Ten of Swords. This Ten of Swords to me is a repeat, of pat a repeat pattern. It means that I've taken sword after sword after sword. It can be from one person or it can be from many people. You know what I mean? Like maybe it's just something, a habit I have within myself where for whatever the reason, I allow these swords because this person is allowing them. You know, not that they want them. It's just that they're just so used to them. I expect a dagger, and therefore a dagger shows. It's a ten. It wants to come to an end. This king may be someone of an earlier time. Now, are they responsible for putting all those swords in you? I just don't feel that. So let's keep going. We have, well, we have another king. King of Swords. Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. King of, in the upright, truth, authority, integrity. Hello, Ace of Pentacles. How interesting. So under the Knight of Cups that's bringing you in a cup of fulfillment, listen, maybe it's not love. Maybe it's some type of opportunity. You know what I find interesting? I almost feel like, like I'm in those ten swords, like I'm in that energy. And that's kind of like submissive type of energy. You know, again, it's like I know sword of sword's going to keep coming. And it's just going to keep happening until I... Do something about it until I put an end to it. Um, and it does mean I need to be bold, right? Because I'm so used to this energy. You know, it's like having that dark cloud that just follows you. And just being so used to it that you think there, you know, sometimes you just feel like there's no other way. But that's just not true, right? That's just not true. 
you know, it's interesting because I feel like a couple fulfillment and the Ace of Pentacles. So the Ace of Pentacles, you know, and by the way, this page is holding this, this Ace of Pentacles. He's holding it right in his hand. He's like displaying it to us. So this is something that comes into your physical world. It is meant to really expand and enhance your life in some way. You know, sometimes I feel like it comes in as a mustard seed. And it's me who has to nurture the seed. Um, but it it really has no limit upon it. Any limit upon where the seed can take me is, is where my mind, you know, my mind may tell me. All right, look at this. Another ten. So we have the Ten of Pentacles under the Ten of Swords. Or does that feel like a changing of houses? Like I am moving out of one house. I am moving out of the house of the Ten of Swords. And I am moving into the house of the Ten of Pentacles. Now what I find interesting is we have the Ace first. And then the Ten. So I feel like the 10 is the ultimate destination. But I don't feel like, you know, right away we're in it. You know, this page over here, this could certainly talk about something you went to school for. And whatever, for whatever reason, maybe you weren't able to, you know, bring it to fruition. Again, I feel this is a year to do it if you can. And I know you can. I don't know why I'm saying that. All right, let's keep going. Well, hello, Queen of Cups. How interesting. King of Cups, Queen of Cups. Queen of Cups, interesting. She's holding that cup. Did this king give her this cup? The cup that he was holding. She's looking towards the future. bring these up a little just so weird all of a sudden I'm thinking did I push record oh okay hello marriage card what's going on here Pisces you know you always have the most interesting readings you really do I just love doing your readings um and it doesn't mean they're always you know easy but they're always interesting this is the marriage card. Um, but it's the commitment card. Doesn't, you know, because not everybody wants to get remarried or married. Um, but it is definitely a commitment. And um, to me, this is the most special love card in the Tarot. Because this is about two people who want to commit the rest of their lives to each other. No joke. You know what I mean? It's not like someone who just wants, like, let's go on a couple of dates. You know what I mean? I mean, maybe it starts that way, but it's a commitment. So I feel like this king who starts the reading with this cup and then the knight of cups, it, you know, and I often feel the knights are sent by the kings or the queens. So this king is sending out this knight. This knight's carrying a cup of fulfillment. He's got to get through these ten swords to reach his ultimate destination, which I feel is the queen. There's a magician. There's the infinity above his head. Number eight. Look at that magician under that Ace of Pentacles. You know, now I have no doubt that you can take that Ace and turn it into the Ten of Pentacles. I mean, I have no doubt. You have to trust yourself. You know, that's what a magician is about. The magician is our teacher. Um, and the magician teaches us that, you know, especially if we think of ourselves as the Fool, which we are in the Tarot, um, usually, the magician teaches the fool that um, to be successful on this next journey, because remember, there's many journeys through it throughout our life. 
But to be sec- to be successful within this journey, you already possess everything it takes. It's already within you. You know, you just have to know that. You have to trust that. Three swords mirroring that ten of swords. Well, that makes sense. And then justice. I feel like someone is leaving the picture. And I feel like someone new is entering the picture. I feel like who's ever leaving the picture, it's time. Because not only have they taken you to the Ten of Swords, but it's showing the effect of it, right? The heartache of it. And I feel like, you know, this king here, I did feel this energy of like thinking, you know, like, how do I say this? Like, figuring out how can I get this cup? to the queen even though i know right now i got to travel through those swords eight of wands on the bottom of the deck when i think about it bring about that makes sense with the ten of swords right because i feel like in the ten of swords that's what i'm thinking about and i'll be damned that's what i bring about however Sorry, I had to readjust my seat. However, I mean, can I turn that around? Yeah. You can. You absolutely can. And by the way, that is a number eight. And it's on the bottom of the deck. So it's like the beginning of the year. When I think about it, bring about the power of that, the magician. I feel like this is saying that someone is, well, I'm just going to say who's ever putting these swords in your back. I feel like there's an opportunity. Like, I feel like someone else comes into the picture. Um, and, you know, I feel like they're aware of those swords. They're aware of what you've been through. Um, or and, and again, it can be vice versa. But I do feel like someone is aware of that now. I also feel like, you know, you don't necessarily have to be in those in the energy of the Ten of Swords right now, but you were. And my wondering is if if this is a little bit and I don't feel like this is like when I say past energy, I don't feel like years and years ago. But. It's interesting because I feel like. You know, I never want to say that I feel the potential of someone getting a divorce because I, I don't like to break up. Um, you know, I don't want to be responsible for breaking up any couples. However, what I would say here is if you're in a relationship and if you are taking all these swords um, and if you are expecting things to change, it doesn't feel like there's change. And I'm saying that because the Ten of Swords is mirrored by the Three of Swords. So I feel like that's just, it will just keep happening. It'll just keep happening. I feel like there's opportunities coming your way, though, Pisces, that um, can really, listen, I feel like change your life. Literally change your life. And I feel like maybe all areas of your life, and I don't say that very often. Your love. I feel like in 2024, you're going to be loving someone different. And I also feel that this Ace of Pentacles, again, coming in as a seed, but the potential of it becoming the Ten of Pentacles. And then you have the marriage card here. So first of all, I feel like who's ever bringing in that Knight of Cups, that unexpected cup of fulfillment, I feel like they've got their shit together. You know, I feel like they're a hard worker. Um, I don't think it's all about the money. I'm not saying that. But I do feel like this is someone who, it just feels like they're doing pretty well in life. 
And um, I don't know. I feel like then you take this ace. This is also great energy of working from home and being very successful at it. All right. Let's bring in the Gilded Tarot. I don't feel like I need to clarify a lot, to be honest, because I feel like it's being very direct. I just feel like one of these kings now can be a queen. Remember that where we have both masculine and feminine energy. Um, but I definitely it just it just fits like this king holding that cup gives it to the knight. The knight starts on his travels does come across the stormy the stormy weather this stormy energy you know and then reaches this this um page so to speak you know the page can also speak about what's in the atmosphere because again this page is holding this um ace of pentacles and it's right above the queen so i know this ace is for this queen and i do feel like you're the queen And I hate to give this king a bad rap. But I am going to give him a bad rap. Because I feel like he's responsible for these swords. Now you do need to learn from that though. You need to understand that, you know, sometimes we can get to the point where we just, it's just like, we just take the swords. Maybe we stop believing in ourselves or we don't feel like we're strong enough to um, overcome. But you, but you can. All right. Look at that. The full is under that eight of wands. What I think about it, bring about, you want to bring about a new beginning. Remember the fold does take a leap of faith. But the full and then the eight, I feel like, what do I want to bring about? A new beginning. Judgment. Coming over this king. I feel like this king is being, hmm, like, I feel like his guides are like sending him signs um and i feel eternal internally you know like it's time i feel like this king has really gone deep with this thought has gone deep with the potential of you know i feel like this king knows what the king wants He just wants to know what's the best timing. Because I don't feel like this is an easy situation. But I don't feel like it's going to stop the king anyway. So judgment is our spiritual team. And their message is calling you to the present moment. It makes complete sense. We should live in the present moment. They're calling you in the present moment because there's about to be a rebirth. This king is going to hand off this cup. I just can feel it. And I feel like um, his spirit guides, and I'm saying he can be she, but his spirit guides are... 100%, not only 100% behind him, but I feel like helping to guide him. It's almost like they know that he's going to have to weather this storm to reach this queen. But they're saying you can do it. Look what's down here. What's mirroring it? The marriage card. Look at this. Oh my gosh, Pisces. Right over the Knight of Cups is now the Ten of Cups. 
So you have the Ten of Pentacles and the Ten of Cups. You have the Ace of Pentacles and the Marriage card. You have such beautiful energy here. You just have a little bit of roughness from the past. Look at that. This person's not messing around. I don't know if they know you, but I feel like they must. This person is not messing around. And what I mean by that is I feel they feel so clear about what they want and who they want. And this is not, again, this is nothing temporary. I feel like this is someone who is like, listen, I want to live in the house of harmony with you. I want to live in the house of abundance. I want us to live together. I want us to be together. Some may say, I want to be with you also. But first, I have to cut ties to who's ever causing the Ten of Swords. The Ace of Swords. Hmm. Interesting. It's like ring ring. Hello. Pisces? Yes. You remember me? I think I do. You just been on my mind. You've been on my mind. I've been wanting to communicate with you. But I know you were in another relationship. You know, it's interesting because I always say, like, you know, don't expect someone else to save your life. You got to save your own life. But I feel like this Ace of Swords coming over the Ten of Swords. You know, first of all, it makes sense to me more now. Because of the Knight of Cups, right? Unexpected Cup of Fulfillment coming right to the Ten of Swords. Well, there's no fulfillment in that. So I feel like what it's saying is, no, it's going to start as communication. Queen of Wands, Queen of Action. Hmm. You know, I feel like um, it's interesting because I, I know I say it's interesting all the time, but to me it is very interesting. But I'm getting this feeling that like somehow I ended up with someone and listen, this could be like different you like more than one person but they all had the same type of energy and it was all about them you know in the ten of swords if it's one person well they're a narcissist right it's their way or the highway and there is no way around that the only way around that is to leave is to take the highway but it's difficult when you're in it and i've been in it and I know exactly that energy of like wanting to leave, but just not knowing how. So I feel like this Ace of Swords is like the phone ringing. It's some type of communication. It doesn't have to be the phone. It could be like an instant message. Instant message is what they call it. Um, you know what I mean? Like a text or, you know, a message on Facebook, something like that. That's how I feel like they're going to reach out. And I find it interesting because I feel like the Queen of Wands is like, even though I feel you are the Queen of Cups here, I feel like you're also the Queen of Wands because you are very intuitive. 
Um, and, you know, when I think of the Queen of Wands, I think of someone who moves according to her passions. She's one, she's someone who thinks about it later. You know what I mean? Um, but she is a queen. So I feel like, you know, any movement she makes, she's got wisdom behind it. Let's just put it that way. It's interesting because I feel like I'm two, two, two different people with two different, like I'm, like when I'm with this person, I'm this meek and I don't know, like powerless person. But with this person, I am the opposite. I am, it's like I'm celebrated for being who I am. Where before I feel like I was like, uh, what's the word I want to use? Degraded. You know, and I, and I got to say too, what you got to, what you want to take from the Ten of Swords is usually someone who can put all those swords in you, who can break your heart and know that they're breaking your heart. And I do feel like it's definitely more than one time. Um, what was I going to say? Um, I just feel like they're not concerned. Like, I feel like they have a lack mentality. And it's their lack mentality that makes them feel like, if I don't have control of the situation, I'm powerless. I feel like this is someone also who would... Um, I mean, why would you want to be with someone who doesn't want to be with you? And I mean that from the narcissist point of view. Like, why does a narcissist, like, want to be with someone only to control them? Power. Power. All right, let's keep going. Anyways, I feel like this this conversation um, changes your thinking in a good way. I really wasn't going to clarify everything, um, but why not, right? You guys have, you, well, I was going to say you guys have the time. We have Temperance, um, Card of Sagittarius. It's about divine timing. Trusting in divine timing. You know, I feel like Temperance is, um, she watches over the soulmates. And I feel like part of her job is to make sure that the soulmates are of equal vibration. And I'm calling it her job, but I feel like it's just what she does. So that's what the divine timing is about. Right? I want to make sure both are in equal vibration. However, sometimes I have to go in before... You know, like, I feel like temperance would would be, would say, you know, the perfect scenario, of course, would be like clearing of those ten swords, um, separating yourself from whoever caused those ten of swords, allow that ace of cups or, you know, the knight of cups to find you um, and stimulate you, accept that Ace of Pentacles and allow your creativity to grow it to the Ten of Pentacles. You know, the power of the magician. Again, there's nothing that you're going through that you haven't already been through. Listen, this is a repeat pattern, but this may be something, This I'm, I'm looking at the Three of Swords and the Ten of Swords. This could be something that is of previous lives also. Like, it could be something karmic that until I clear it up, it just keeps happening. And I feel like justice many times represents karma. But listen, you know, don't be afraid of karma because, again, it's like once you clear that karma, you clear it for eternity. Unless you create more of it. <laughs> you know what I mean? 
like literally I can sit there and watch people and I'll be like, oh man, this person's creating some karma for their for themselves. Oh, I know what I said. I um on Instagram, I think it was, someone sent me a message and said, um, and it was a well, they call themselves a psychic, but they said that um there was a dark cloud over my head and there's dark energy that wants to kill me and kill my family and um, I was just blown away. Not that I believed one word of it, because anyone who is, you know, working from the light would never say something like that. So, you know, I said, I wrote her a message and I just said, you know, shame on you. Shame on you for the things that you just said, because a lot of people would have bought into that. You know what I mean? Um, but I but I told her, I said, what you're doing is you're creating karma right now. And I said, good luck. Because good luck. <laughs> good luck. All right. Anyways, let's keep going. Two pentacles over that ace. Six of Wands, Victorious Energy over the Ten of Pentacles. And then the Eight of Pentacles with the Queen. Um, I like that. Because, first of all, Two Pentacles coming over the Ace of Pentacles. Yes, it kind of puts the ball in your court. Two Pentacles, they call it, they call it the Juggler's card. Um, I call it using your Logical Mind card. You know what I mean? Like when I'm making a decision here. Now, this one is particularly about the pentacle that's coming in. Again, I feel like you have two things coming your way. One is a cup of fulfillment and one is a pentacle that I feel like ultimately, I feel like it's in your creative um, wheelhouse, but I feel ultimately, um, you, I do feel like you're going to say yes, because right next to it is the Six of Wands. Again, the energy of victory. Um, but listen, what I love is you have the energy of victory, and it's coming between the Ten of Swords and the Three of Swords. So I feel like goodbye, Ten of Swords. Some of you, this could certainly be a platform. Um, you know, the Eight of uh, Pentacles. I often feel this person is just like, I'm going to take this pentacle and I'm going to create with it and I'm going to put my head down and I'm going to get to work. Um, it is an eight. So this ace or this ace of pentacles is something new, um, but it's meant to, again, enhance your money. You know, don't forget, this is a year of abundance and potential wealth. But we may have to start at the beginning. That's not a problem. This is the willingness to go into something as the apprentice, knowing that if I put my focus on it, I will leave as a master teacher. And I definitely feel that you do. And you will. You know, and listen, whatever you want to create out of that. Um, but I feel like it, it is creative energy, though. Could be a job offer. But again, it's because of you and what you can bring to the table. You know what I want to say also, like, let's just say it's a job offer, but you don't feel quite qualified. Like, and I felt this in my life too. Like, I can't believe they're offering me the job. The Eight of Pentacles to me, especially with the Page of Pentacles right above it, listen again, something you maybe you went to school for. Um, something that... Um, has been with you for a while, you know, it may be just in it, just talent that you have. But in the Eight of Pentacles, um, I don't know, all of a sudden, I feel like some of you, like you're making jewelry, uh, you're working with your hands, um, some of you may be tarot readers, um, but then I'm also feeling like some may decide to go to like to law school or go back and take a class this ace is meant to give you the way 
give you the opportunity. Yes, you have to say yes to it. All right. We have the Page of Swords over the Four of Wands. And look at this. We have four, the Four of Cups over the Magician. Let's talk about this. All right. So the Page of Swords, honestly, I feel like this is the communication. And I do feel like someone's nervous about it. You know, like, like almost like praying, like guide my words you know, so that I can reach someone's soul, guide my, guide me. Um, and I feel like you will, they, they, or you will be guided. Then you come to the four of cups. Well, the four of cups talks about this, you know, like discontentment in one's life, um, bored with one's life. Well, if you're in the three and 10 of swords, that would make sense. Right. But I want you to see what's happening here. Because this person is being handed a cup. It's coming right from the heavens. Directly to you. So this really wants you to use your spiritual discernment. Now. What's mirroring it? The Knight of Cups. There is that cup again. Do you say yes? I kind of feel like you do. Let's put it this way. You know, maybe it all just starts with communication and conversation. And then maybe it starts to move that way. I feel like, I feel like this night couldn't have come at a more perfect time. Just when I thought, this is just the way my life is going to look. Everything changes for the best, for the good. Again, moving out of the Ten of Swords house into the Ten of Pentacles house. But not just that. We also have the Ten of Cups. Okay, I got to keep going. I keep forgetting that I'm not just doing one reading. I'm doing three. So let's... Three Cups over the Three of Swords. 33, we see that all the time. And then the Hierophant over justice. Taurus and Libra right there. Um, but here's what I really feel. You know, I feel like someone may be, maybe you're married. <clears throat> and maybe, you know, you're in your upbringing. Uh, in your upbringing um, divorce is just off the table. Yet, yet, are you meant to, you know, does, does your, your church or whoever want you to stay within this Ten of Swords energy? You know what I mean? Would God want you to stay in that? So remember, religion is man-made. Um, and again, I'm not telling anyone to get a divorce because this is energy you'd already want. Um, and it doesn't even have to, again, be a divorce. It just may be cutting a ties. And then the hierophant comes over that. It is about your faith system, your belief. But listen, you have a right to believe in yourself also. I am kind and thoughtful towards myself and others. Okay. Let's keep moving. So, January, it looks like we have a couple different things going on, but major things. We have this cup. And this cup, I feel like, uh, and not just the cup, but we also have this pentacle. And I feel like both are meant to really, listen, I feel like change your world. I feel like 2024 will be unrecognizable to you compared to, to you know, compared to maybe the last seven years. Maybe longer. All right. Let's move into February, keeping all this in mind. Um, and I say that because time is fluid. You know, we can put a time on it. 
we can say January, we can say February, but you know, it happens when it happens. And what I mean by that is this night's coming in, no matter what, this night's coming in. But the person in the Ten of Swords is the one who's really going to have to make the decision of whether I accept it or not. Okay, anyway. Let's go into February. That almost felt like February with all that love. But it wasn't just love. Remember that. February. Are you ready? Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. All right. Hello, memories of love. Six of Cups. So, I mean, I got goosebumps. And you know, I got goosebumps because I was just thinking that this is the king. And as soon as I thought this is the king, I got goosebumps. So that's just, to me, verification. Partnerships and alliances. Memories of love. Partnerships and alliances. Look how they're coming together. They're not just holding hands. You know, that means something. But, same time, I want you to notice tattoos also. Like a barcode. That probably means something. Five of Cups. So we have the Six of Cups. Now we have the Five of Cups. And then we have Rest and Rejuvenation. This is the Four of Swords. This is healing. This is healing of those swords. Those previous swords. You know, and there's something I want you to tell yourself too. By the way, look at this. Three, four, five, six. Three, four, five, six. Um, what I want you to tell yourself is... I don't know there was a lot that you could do to make the energy of those Ten of Swords be any better. Because I feel like, again, it was someone... Um, or maybe, again, it can be your whole life where, you know, well, I feel like, you know, sometimes you can get beaten down so bad, you can get told that you're no good, you're not worthy, and you can start to believe that. Now, that is one messed up person's opinion it's not truth but sometimes i can take it on why because i've been in it for so long don't allow that to happen and i feel like that's what the four swords is talking about healing of the past but i feel like this isn't healing where i'm laying in my bed you know healing i feel like i'm still moving as i'm doing this now, I find it interesting that we have the Five of Cups and the Six of Cups. Because in the Five of Cups, first of all, five is change. This talks about emotional loss. Well, memories of love. So that is that king. And you are connecting. And that's just that. The Hierophant again called wisdom in this deck. It is your wisdom. Your wisdom. I feel like, um, by the way, six and a five often tie the 11. First of all, 11, 11, 11, you know, we all know it's the time when we make a wish. This can talk about making a wish and that wish coming true. But I also feel like 11 sometimes can talk about a twin flame. Um, 
you know, I feel like, it, you know, back in the, back in January, I feel like that King, again, was going to come in no matter what. But I do feel like this King prayed over, like, you know, like, um, guide my words so that they can see that I'm coming from a place of truth. I have a feeling they know that you were dealing with, like, a lot of heart, a lot of, a lot of shit. But I also feel like this must talk about energy of two people who, doesn't matter how many people we've been with afterwards, it's like someone who's always, like, taking space in my heart. You know, it's like nobody can really fulfill that. Doesn't mean you can't have love. All right, we have the chariot. Beautiful. First of all, it's a seven. 2023 is a seven. We're moving out of that into 2024. The chariot talks about unlimited potential. You know, what's interesting also is the chariot to me is the balance of the divine masculine and the divine feminine. So I wouldn't be surprised if some of you, this is a twin flame. Um, but listen, don't go searching. Like, don't, like, if a twin flame is meant to happen, it'll happen. And it's not always, it's not an easy trip. It could just, it could be a soulmate, which is a much, I mean, both are just, you know, both. You know each other's soul. That's it, just it. You know each other's soul. I may not know why. Mental conflict. That's the two of swords. What do I do? What do I do? Listen. I feel like two people have been missing each other. Now, it doesn't mean that like someone was on my mind 24-7. But they've been in my heart 24-7. Temptation. This is the devil, card of Capricorn. Mirroring wisdom. Hierophant. I kind of get now where, I mean, I understand where I could be a little nervous doing anything um, because of what I've been through. But this is not that. Like, I want to make that very clear. This is not that. You know, this is not anyone who's put end swords in you. Doesn't mean, like, my heart wasn't broken, right? Because there was a split up somewhere, somehow. Um, but the, the love remained, even if it wasn't like, you know, um, first and foremost, because it's inner, it's inner. And I feel like if I'm the queen, there's no way I'm going to tell the person in the Ten of Swords about, you know, who really lives in my heart. You know, you think you live in my heart? Mm -mm. You don't live in my heart. You don't live in my heart. You're just you're just making my life hell. You're not a lover. You're not a love. It's interesting too because if you look at this, it's like there's the light, right? Because you know, when you think of temptation, you think of darkness, right? Things that tempt me. Things that tempt me into the dark. But there's a light. And he's like, it's like the devil's touching the light. But that light is really a key. And that key is what unlocks the next door. It's almost like someone's trying to hide that key from you. They don't want you to unlock that next door. They're not done putting swords in you. But you're done taking them.
Nine of Pentacles, beautiful. Material harvest. So we started with that, that Ace of Pentacles. That Ace of Pentacles did move into the Ten of Pentacles. But then the Queen received the Eight of Pentacles. So to me, the Ten of Pentacles is the destination that I'm shooting for. Though you don't want to project yourself too far out in the future. You want to be in present day moment, you know, energy um, creating from that. And then I feel like you'll just automatically end up there. So, you know, the queen's like, you know what? I am going to take that ace and I am going to create with it. Or I am going to build my life with it. And so forth. And so she does. This is now reaping the benefits of one's hard work. It's also a very independent type energy. And I have to say, after dealing with those 10 swords, becoming independent, and I don't mean like not being in a relationship, not wanting love in my life, because you want a balanced life. But once I can take care of me, then I'm not so scared, right? Because this is what you've done. This is what you've built. This is from, this is coming from within you. No one can take that. I mean, you know, can, can they, I mean, yeah, they can take your ideas or what have you and claim them as their own. Um, now, I don't even know why I'm bringing that up, but, you know, yeah, that can happen. But this is really about your willingness to create success for yourself. You know, you are the one who benefits directly from the nine of, of, of pentacles. Material harvest. Almost like I'm saying, never again. Why not be able to take care of me? You know, maybe I didn't have the money to move out of those ten of swords. And now I have more than enough money. Now why? Again, because she took that ace, that seed. Took the eight of pentacles and nurtured that seed. And grew that seed to success. This tells me that. Both people who I feel are coming together are able to really create their own success. You know, I feel this all the time, and I don't know if you guys are getting sick of me saying it, but what a great energy for a spiritual-based business. Now, spiritual-based business just means that I'm helping my fellow man. You know, many people are like, what's my purpose? Your purpose is just to help your fellow man. All right, keep going. Ace of Swords. Well, there's that transformation we were talking about. Remember, we don't want to run from it. We want to embrace it. I mean, especially now. Right, because we're moving into February. There's my birthday, 9-13. Um, it's interesting how I see birthdays all the time. This is the death card, uh, card of Scorpio. By the way, Temptation is the card of Capricorn. I don't know if I said that. Triumph or the Chariot, Cancer. Wisdom is um, the Hierophant, which is Taurus. Just all of a sudden wanted to get all the signs out. Virgo down here. <clears throat> so anyways, transformation. We already talked about it. We knew it was going to happen. This is good transformation. This is transformation you do want to embrace. You know, the two swords above that. A little fear factor, right? Especially if you've let the ten swords. But listen, I feel like one of the reasons why you left... The Ten of the Swords, because I feel like first communication came in and maybe someone started to build you back up, even if it was like long distance. 
This is closing of a door so that a new door can open. Look at that. And that's exactly what you do. That's exactly what you do. Moving on. I feel so proud of you. <laughs> Moving on. That means that you understand what's been toxic. Who's been toxic? Who's holding you down, holding you back? What are your own thoughts telling you? You know, again, if you've been like hammered with like negativity and someone telling you you're worthless and this and that, and you started to buy it, this is you now understanding that that was all bullshit, right? They didn't know what they're talking about. They can't do half or a quarter of what you can do. They don't have your talent. They don't have your skills. They don't know how to love. But you do. You do. You do exactly what the universe is asking for you to do. You close that door. Once and for all. You know what's been holding you back now. And you're saying enough is enough. Interesting that we opened your reading with the six for February. And the last card is also a six. See, it's on the bottom of the deck. Hello, star. Your hopes, your dreams, your wishes. It's also Aquarius, your neighbor. Spiritual strength underneath that. It's like your spiritual team said, it, it just wants you to know they've been with you the whole time. And again, like this king, who I feel like went to his spiritual team and is asking the big questions, but it's about you. I feel like they're, they helped not just guide the king, but they're helping to guide the queen so that she can have, well, the life that she deserves. Wow. Wow. Someone wants to love you. I feel like someone wants to love you for the rest of your life. I don't want you to look at those ten swords that were and be like, how stupid of me. Understand that you learned a lot through that energy. Sometimes we learn like, man, how did we give our power away? But the truth is, once you gain that power back, you're not going to give it away again. So it was a lesson, right? Because once you've given that power away, you're not going to give it away again. Okay, I don't even feel like I need to clarify this. Let's move into March. Waiting game. March. I, all of a sudden, I'm feeling like, man, I'm having fun. Like, I really love doing your readings. All right, one more shuffle. By the way, give a shout out to Justin, who is, um, I believe his birthday is the 26th. Okay, that doesn't want to come up. We are not going to make it. All right. Four swords. You know, this is what I think about the four swords. The four swords is not a one-time thing. The four swords is available Anytime, you know, it's healing of the mind, the body, the soul, but it's also the realization of oneself. 
you know, like, how did I end it from that 10 swords? Listen, don't like don't blame yourself because I feel like you're probably lured into it. That's what I feel like. Like I was lured into it. And then before I knew it, bam, I'm in it. So anyways, I feel like, um, you know, healing just, it's again, it's not a one-time thing. And understand that. Like you can use that energy anytime. The Palace of Swords. Hello, Ace of Cups. Look at the love in your reading, Pisces. Everywhere. In each spread. Each month. Hello, Four. Wow. The Four and the Four of Swords mirroring each other. You know, it's almost like I'm saying to the person who reaches out and communicates with me, who I do feel like loves you. Um, it may be saying a little bit like, I just need to make sure that, you know, that I, I am healed, that I'm able to be, you know, all that, you know, all that is needed in a relationship. But the fool is about taking a chance, taking a risk, take a chance on me. Right? Two people holding up this cup. Two people. Masculine and the feminine. Holding up this cup of unconditional love. I feel like this unconditional love has followed you through your lifetimes. In a good way. The Knight of Wands. Passion. Rushing in. The Four of Pentacles coming under the Palace of Swords. Great energy again from working from home. Using your own voice as your platform. Speaking about your own experiences and how you got through. This healing may not even be for you. It may be you helping others to heal. That may be a clue for some of you, like a direction. You know, this is about passion. The Knight of Wands, some type of passion. And there's two fours around it. So stability at the same time. It, you know, it's the foundation. Well, hello, another palace, palace of wands, under the ace of cups. Hello, passionate house. It's almost like two people who won't be able to keep their hands off each other. Look at that, nine of pentacles with the full. There's that page of pentacles again, different deck. That's why I'm using different decks. Looking for those synchronicities. So. It's interesting because remember, we opened the reading with the knight or the king with that cup in his hand, talking to his spiritual team about how best can I deliver that cup? It comes through the knight of cups, right? That unexpected cup of fulfillment. <clears throat> but it feels like it starts as communication. I feel like what it's saying is March, approximately, is the period of time where the two of you may just, like, physically now come together. I feel like by March, you're a new person. I just feel like you're a new person. I feel like you can take care of yourself financially. Not that you couldn't before, but there's something different. There's just something different. Well, there's elimination of, of someone or something that's been very, very negative. It's been very toxic. Goodbye. 
Page of Pentacles. Not goodbye, Page of Pentacles. The Moon. There's your major arcana. Um, also ruler of Cancer. The Moon can talk about uncertainties. But it's also very dreamy type energy. Some of you, I feel like you might be going to night school. Like taking a class at night. To keep building your pentacles. Yeah, I definitely feel that for someone. Like you're taking a class and, um, you know, it could be just, it could be school. Could be like, I'm literally going back to school, but I feel for more, it's like, and when I say class, it doesn't mean I'm like actually going to like a college and taking a class. I might be doing it online. Two wands mirrored by that ace of cups. This is you saying yes. This is us beginning down the path. Let's go hand in hand. Five of Cups. Five of Cups being mirrored by the Fool. Interesting, the Five of Cups is also mirrored by this page over here. I feel like a lot of this energy has been driven by. Again, energy of someone that, you know, listen, I feel like the queen didn't even expect to get back with this king. And I'm saying get back. They don't necessarily had have been in a relationship, but I do feel like they know each other. And I feel like they, they have known each other. Now, it may have been years. It may have been years. I'm not worried about this Five of Cups because the Five, again, speaks of change. And if you look at what's mirroring it, the Fool, that's exactly what I'm giving it. The change it's asking for. Look at that. The Ace of Wands on the bottom of the deck. Inspired action. You know, the Ace of Wands is... Well, I kind of feel like you got to reach out and grab all the aces, except for the ace of cups. Um, you know, but I do have to say yay or nay to them. But this is this is inspired energy, inspired action. Coming under the page of cups and the star. All right. I think I will. Um, again, I don't feel like I need to clarify, but I do feel like I'm going to. Yeah, let's do a couple parts here. I mean, how much do I love that the Ace of Cups is now mirrored by the Two of Wands? Your whole reading has been about really a special type of love. But also, it's like two parts. It's a very special type of love, but it's also speaking about you and your talents and the abundance that you can create for yourself. And listen, don't be, look at that, there's that king. Don't be, you know, like, sometimes we don't know, like, what direction do I even go? That's when you really want to, act, you know, speak with your guides now, let's say like, uh, but my mind's cloudy. I can't really feel my guides. You know what I mean? But then you're watching YouTube, let's say. And let's say you're watching a tarot reading and you're like, that is really interesting. I mean, that's how I got into it. You know, that is really interesting. I wonder if I could do that. Get yourself a deck of cards. You know what I mean? It's, it's sometimes that simple. We had to be willing to start at the beginning. But that's temporary. Okay. I don't even know what I want to look at. 
What do I want to look at? Let's just go. I'm going to go right between the top and the middle line. The tower. Well, that makes sense. What am I healing over? Tower. Someone's fall from grace. Listen, I feel like this is you giving the tower. I don't I in no way feel like this is you receiving a tower. I feel like wow. That was wild. Literally took. Look at that. It knocked the Ace of Cups off the board. The tower knocked the Ace of Cups off the board. No, I shouldn't say the tower knocked it off the board. The four of wands comes out. Look at that. The tower. And I feel like this is you giving the tower. And then the four of wands. I'm going to put you on pause for one second. I'm going to go find that ace of cups. Okay. It literally stayed in the upright. Just like that. So. You know. It's like even though it was like. I don't want to say it was thrown off the table. I, you know what I feel like it's saying? Because I feel like this is you giving someone tower. And I, I literally feel like you're saying, like, you know, if someone starts to whine and cry about it, you're like, listen, there is no love left. I have no love left. There's nothing left. Now, that's to the person of the Ten of Swords. There is no love left. Boom. Power. And then what follows the tower? You know, it's like the death card. And when you do, you know, as much tarot as I do, you see, like, I see the patterns. I see the synchronicities. And when I say things like the death card that ask you to close the door so a new door can open, I see how important that is. Like, literally, the majority of the times following the death card is a very important card. Same with the tower. Like sometimes we feel like we can't rebound from these towers, but you can. And there's the healing, so you can rebound. Look at that, the Four of Wands. Again, the marriage card. Can even be blended families, by the way. You know what I mean? Like this could be someone that I'm starting a family with. Or this could be two family, you know, like they have kids, I have kids. But it's all, it's very, like, a lot of harmony within that. Now, it doesn't mean that even these two don't, won't have issues in life. They will. That's life. But this is about working it out together. Now, I have a feeling when these two come together, I don't care what happens unless there would be cheating but i feel that nowhere nowhere i feel like these two are in it for the long run they're in it for the long run but listen they love each other truly and you may not even understand that yet you know what I mean? It may not be until you're in it. Because again, it is about two souls who know each other. Maybe not on this earthly plane. But for eternity, you've known each other. Though I do feel the majority of you. It is someone that you know. Again, doesn't have to be a lover. An old lover. 
the nine of swords worry, but it's unnecessary worry. Chariot. Okay. Chariot again. I kind of love how the chariot's really sitting over the Knight of Pentacles. Hello, money. And I don't mean money in a, like, I do mean money. I do. I feel like when I talk about or in the beginning of the reading, when I talked about sharing the love, share the wealth, I feel like here, this is, you're starting to share the wealth. I feel you become very abundant. But listen, abundant in your finances, yes. Because I feel like you're taking a risk. You're doing something that just feels right for you. And it feels right for me, for you. Now, as it relates to love, it is worry, but look what you've been through. But it is a card of unnecessary worry. That is its message. Understandable that you would be nervous. You know, listen, maybe I was married before and I thought that was going to go the whole way. And then look what the hell happened. These are two totally different types of people. And that's why healing keeps coming first. I have to know that. Understand that. And understand that sometimes, you know, there are just people who do not know how to love. And listen, there may be a million reasons why. Maybe they weren't loved as children. And we can feel sorry for them. You know, and we can try to help them. And we can try to change them. But none of that's going to work. None of that's going to work. And it's not your job to fix them. You know what I mean? Like, great. If you can fix someone, great. But you ain't going to fix the person in the Ten of Swords. I'm just telling you that. So don't even try. I mean, you do whatever you want. But that's how I feel. You know, that this nine of swords, it is a nine. So when you think of nine, think of final reflection. Reflection, yes, but final reflection. I'm not meant to stay within the nine, right? I'm meant to get back to that one, the magician. Okay. One more. And then we'll read Mother Mary. Here's the death card right under the tower. Goodbye. Adios. Ciao. Look at that. Ace of Wands under the Four of Wands. Ace of Wands on the bottom of your deck. Death card, closing doors, any door that's just no longer serving you. You know, it doesn't even have to be just that Ten of Swords energy. Just what's no longer serving you. I got to know when to close the doors. You remember how I literally just said, I don't know if I literally just said it, but I said that when the death card shows, almost always... The very next card is, let's just say, of the light. But look at this, the Ace of Wands. So it jumped off of the bottom onto the table. Under the marriage card. And over your major arcana. Pisces, what the hell am I going to name your reading? You know, I give you a tip. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, we got two cards. All right, we have the Four of Pentacles first. Coming under that Nine of Swords, simply to me, that's saying, think about your foundation. How was your foundation before 
compared to how it is now. You know, like, let's say, again, that Ten of Swords was one person. What was I, was my foundation strong? And if it wasn't, you'll never not let it be again. I mean, to me, that is the lesson. Like, I, like once I go through that energy, and I've been through it, I'll never let someone knock me off my foundation again. No matter how much I love them, by the way. It, it does nothing to do about love. It's you feeling strong within yourself. And then look at this. The Ten of Cups. The Ten of Cups. This is the beautiful House of Harmony. Second time you've seen it. Second time you've seen the Marriage card. Second time you've seen the Chariot. Unlimited Potential. And by the way, over that Nine of uh, Pentacles, Independent Success, Successful Self-Employment, Working Out of the Home, Great energy for working out of the home. But, I mean, just love. Love in its purest form. That's what I want to say. And then I feel like, you know, this is all going to be up to you. But I feel like when that Ace of Pentacles shows, and it will... And it can be an epiphany, an idea, an actual opportunity. It can be many different ways. But the more that you, you're you connected with your guides, and that doesn't mean like, you know, like, I can hear them or I can see them, but you recognize the signs. They're helping you. And they're helping to lead you to what just feels like, you know, Pisces, I feel like you have the top reading for months. Garen, yes, you had to get through some shit. But you did. Or you will. I hope. And when you do, Wow. You know, this is not the first time I've said this, but I feel like there are going to be quite a few people who, at the end of 2024, are going to look back and be like, my life looks nothing like it used to look, but in a very positive way. It doesn't mean there won't be issues. It doesn't mean there won't be challenges. But then again, if we remember we're spiritual beings and we can, you know, if there's a challenge, it's to teach us. You know, a spiritual being would be like, yeah, put that challenge in front of me. Let me see if I can overcome it. You know what I mean? Like I would take that challenge like I would take, you know, like if I was a football player, give me the ball. Let me try to get that touchdown. Anyway. Anyway, all right, I feel like I, why over-clarify something, right? Brought us back to that Ten of Cups again. Brought us back to this beautiful harmony, um, what do we want to say, um, beautiful um, harmon harmonious energy. It doesn't sound right. Anyway, let's read Mother Mary Mercy. This card asks you to notice the way in which you relate to. Let me start over. This card asks you to notice the way in which you relate to people, including yourself. If you are kind and thoughtful towards others, you will have higher self esteem. While you can't control how another person treats you, mercy and compassion are usually returned in kind. This card is a message to avoid gossip or criticism of yourself or others and to, be, and to consciously speak in loving and empowering ways. 
the higher energy generated by positive words will insulate you from negativity. This is the true meaning of judge not, lest ye be judged. Amen. Wow, Pisces. I just loved your reading. I just loved it. Um, I thank you for the honor of reading for you. I thank you for your donations, keeping this channel alive. I thank you for a great 2023. And here's to us just exploding in 2024 in, in a very high, high vibrational way. Here's to this love coming true and this opportunity to really create, I don't know, wealth. I want to say the word wealth. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for those who've been subscribers, been with me for a while. Um, thank you for everything you do for my channel. Truly, for your support. I truly, truly appreciate it. I love doing these readings for you. Um, you know, they're not easy. It really, you know, um, but I, I still love it. And maybe that's what some of why I'm saying that, because that may be some of that energy. It's like sometimes it's not easy, but it doesn't mean it's not worth it. I love you guys. Um, wow. Um, I'm trying to think, like, I can't even remember your December reading now, uh, but I'll have that on as one of the end screens. You know, the uh, December readings, they've been done. Um, but if you've missed yours, I'll have it on the end of the reading. Um, but anyways, I'm going to stop talking and just say thank you. I love you. Happy 2024. Keep your eyes open because I am going to do a video that's just going to talk about the number eight. Oh, excuse me. I mean the universal, you know, year eight. Um, these are the type of readings you keep in your back pocket. And you revisit them as things start to move and change. And they will. They will. All right, guys. I love you. I'll see you next time at our table. Bye-bye.